last time on The Great Loop, 2021, Season 1, Episode 5. Our buddy Steve helped us out by taking us up and getting fuel for the boats. Later that afternoon, they prepared a great dinner, and then we sat around like old friends and had a good time. Steve and Mickey wanted to ride along for a while, and I was more than happy to have the company. We were towing their boat. We're gonna run about six because of uh, Marty. This is about one. And look at the nice twin, and slow. Look at the twin V babe. You don't want to look behind you. It's already full, bro. Look, yeah. No, it's right. Just checking on you. Everything good? Yes, sir. We're on the way. All is well. You know, every chance I get whenever I have people on board, I usually try to get them up there in the cockpit and let them look around and usually try to get them to drive, uh, give them that chance to see and experience what it's like to be driving a boat of that size. Usually the smiles tell the tale. After a few miles, it was time to let them get back on their boat so they could turn around and head back. Nice meeting you. Come on, Okay. Who knows? Maybe me and Steve will meet you somewhere. All right, guys. I wanted to um, do a video to show you kind of like where we were and then where we were going to work up to. This day of travel wasn't but about, about 18, 20 miles, something like that. And we started out here in St. James City where I showed you before. Now... Um, when we came out and we started working our way, which would actually have been east, and there's a couple places here that some people would call the miserable mile. It's right in here. And you can see the reason is, is it gets real shallow outside of the channel, like in Picnic Island and Big Island, and you've got to come right through there. And when you got multiple boats, going back and forth it can be a little bit crazy but we made it through there without any big deal and then and when you get up here you start having some currents coming in from the gulf as you can see this is open to the gulf so that was kind of interesting making our way up through here and steve and then we're on the boat all the way up till about right here and this is where we i pulled over untied them and we said our goodbyes all right so then we continued on going up making our way up and we were heading towards fort myers it was pretty uneventful going up there there's a um section right in here where we ended up anchoring and uh it was actually pretty nice right here i think um i anchored right here and marty was over here and then later in the day, we went over to the city dock over here. So that's kind of a good idea um, of what we did that day. So once we made it down to Fort Myers, we had a good bit of the day left and time to kill. And I needed to try to find out where we could get Marty's boat hauled out at, as well as start trying to track down a place to buy a motor. Please leave your message for... Hey, this is Mike Steen. I'm uh, reaching out to you about a motor. If you can give me a call back, 863-412. Thanks. Okay, guys, I want to tell you a story of unexpected blessings. Now, I don't have this on video because it played out over a couple of days. But the dock that we were previously at in St. James City was actually owned by a guy named John. John and I was talking when we first got there and we had mentioned that we were going to haul a motor out 
I had mentioned that I had previously bought two engines that were currently in good times and that they worked out well from a guy in Fort Lauderdale. So during the conversation, he asked me what the guy's name was and I told him. Now I want to keep that out of the video because I don't want to cause any issues. But he said, yes, I know that guy. He said, stay away from him. He said, I've recently bought two motors from him within the year. They both went bad. And he said, the guy wouldn't honor them. And he said, I've done some work and I tracked down who actually built the motors for this particular guy. And we'll call him Garage Man, right? The person that actually was building the motors before for Garage Man, before he got on drugs. Now get this, his name was Angel. So I wasn't sure at the time, so I did um, some research on the computer. And I called Angel, I pulled up his address, and sure enough, by looking at Google Earth, I had visited his garage and I didn't know it. So I explained to Angel what I was needing, that we needed a couple of engines and that the other garage man was, uh, from what I understood, on drugs. He confirmed that story, said he used to build for the guy, but because of money issues, he quit building for him. So from that point, I knew that I had contacted the guy that actually built the engines that were in good times. And I had great success with those engines. So once we knew where we were gonna get the engines from, I had to figure out like the best place to do the haul out. And I contacted Glade's Boatyard. Uh, Glade's Boatyard ended up being a perfect uh, place to do it. They were very inexpensive, very professional. And the lady that works at the front office name is Danielle, and she's very nice and is very helpful. I highly recommend them at Glade's Boatyard. Okay, guys, that's going to wrap up this segment. The next day we got underway, and here's some video of that. And we headed on up towards what we call the I-75 Bridge Anchorage. Come on back, check that out. That's pretty cool. And then we're going to keep working up the Calusi hatchet to get these motors switched out.